Today's video is sponsored by Energy Sage. Visit the link in the description below to find out how Energy Sage can help you contract local verified solar experts to help you generate clean, green, renewable electricity for your home, either through solar panels on your own home or by joining a community solar project in your region. As coal and oil fired power stations quickly head towards the same X life status as the dodo, we're seeing more and more emphasis placed on renewable electricity generation, grid tied energy storage projects, and decentralized power grids that are more resilient and equitable than they've ever been before. That's thanks to a massive drop in the cost of photovoltaic solar panel technology over the last decade. Combined with advances in power inverter technology, this means solar panels are cheaper, more efficient and more powerful than ever before. Traditionally, solar panels have been the preserve of those who are homeowners. But what if I told you that there's now a way to go solar without putting anything on your roof, meaning your electric car could go effectively solar powered while saving you money and supporting renewable electricity generation at the same time? Well, it's possible. So stick around and I'll explain everything. But first... <laughs> As I've shared on this channel many times before, I think solar panels are awesome. And if you are making the transition from a fossil fueled vehicle to a battery electric one, solar panels become a completely logical next step. As I explained in this video, link in the description, solar panels not only help you lower the carbon footprint of your home and the electricity you use to power your electric car, but also helps you lock in the effective price you pay for electricity, lowering your long-term bills and lowering your total cost of ownership for going electric. Except, just like owning an electric car gets a whole lot easier if you have somewhere to park and charge it overnight, which usually translates to off-street parking or garage with power, going solar has traditionally required that you live in a house that you own. But home ownership is becoming an almost impossible dream for many late Gen X and millennials. Worse still for Gen Z. I mean, Gen Z. I know people who are on decent salaries, higher than national average in fact, who haven't got a cat in hell's chance of getting into their own home. Many friends and colleagues are paying as much or more in rent for tiny apartments as those of us who actually have a mortgage. And those who do own a home are usually entering home ownership because they've had a death in the family and have inherited some money to help with a down payment. It's what happened to me. And it's depressing. Of course, you might be lucky. You may have a totally awesome, forward-thinking landlord who is receptive to putting solar panels on their properties for the benefit of tenants. No. <clears throat> Don't laugh. They do exist. I've met some. And by the way, if you are a landlord, you should totally consider adding both solar vehicle charging and electric roofs to your homes, since the former will open up your home to more potential EV driving tenants and photovoltaic solar panels not only make electricity more affordable for the people who live in the building, they also add significant value to the building they're attached to. Also, don't forget to add solar water heating either. That's another major bonus in many, but not all parts of the world. Sadly though, the number of landlords willing to install solar panels on the roofs of their properties is about as many as the number of landlords willing to install electric vehicle charging stations at no cost to tenants. I should also mention that in some parts of the world, like the UK, 
even if you actually own your home, you may find it impossible to install solar panels on your roof. That is, if you happen to live in an area that has some kind of protected status, like an area of outstanding natural beauty or maybe a heritage zone. And that's before we even deal with the very sticky situation of living in a home that's got some kind of protected, listed or historic status, either because it's super old, incredibly unique, or because someone famous was born, lived or died there. Which is where community solar projects come in. Rather than install solar panels on the roof of individual homes, they allow local citizens to either purchase or lease solar panels in a large scale solar farm. As owners or renters of the panels, they get to offset their electricity bills at home with the equivalent amount of energy their panels are producing. Of course, I know that someone is going to get all shouty Bob in the comments and point out that actually the power you are consuming at home comes from a fossil fuel power station or perhaps a mix of different generation methods that are neither green nor renewable. Yeah, no. Electricity is electricity. It doesn't care how it was generated. You can't pick a specific electron within a circuit and go, this one's renewable, and then pick another and go, this one is non-renewable. For a start, in the context of electrical circuits, you're not actually creating or destroying electrons. You're literally just moving them around. And yes, I could go into charge conservation here, but let's be honest, I got a C in physics because I wasn't in class the day our teacher showed us how to do natural log calculations. Ugh. Instead of obsessing about where each individual piece of energy comes from when discussing solar projects or other energy generation, what's more important is the net energy added or subtracted to the system. If you are consuming a total of 50 megawatt hours of electricity per day at your home, and you're part of a community solar project that puts at least 50 megawatt hours of electricity per day back into the electrical grid on your behalf, then your home is solar powered. That 50 megawatt hours of electricity from the community solar project just put 50 megawatt hours of electricity into the grid that would otherwise have had to be generated by burning fossil fuels. You are essentially offsetting the electricity you use with renewable electricity. And frankly, that is basically the unique selling point of community solar projects. You look at what your average annual electricity bill is, and then either buy or lease solar panels that will produce an annual output equivalent to that amount, or a sizable portion of it. Exactly how community solar programs operate does change depending on where you live in the world. But usually what happens is that instead of paying your local electricity company for the electricity you use, your bill gets routed through whichever community solar program you've signed up for. If you've opted to buy panels in a local solar farm, your electricity bill is the difference between the power you consume minus the power your panels have generated. If the panels generate more power than you use, you end up with a credit or a check, depending on the local laws and where you are. And if you use more electricity than you generated, you get a bill for the difference. This is known as virtual net metering. And while not all states offer it yet, it is becoming more and more common. If you choose to lease the panels, or you live in a state where virtual net metering is not available, you end up paying a discounted amount for the electricity you consume, which of course saves you money. And this is very different to most utilities' green power programs. You know the ones, where you're effectively guilt buying green electricity by paying more than you would for regular grid mix, just to say you've got green power. Given the cost to generate electricity using photovoltaic solar is now far more affordable, you really shouldn't be paying more for going with the clean green option when alternatives exist. I should also note that in most parts of the US, there is a maximum limit to leased solar equivalent of around 120% of your usual monthly bill. But well, I'm going to be guessing that most people don't want to lease more than they consume, only own more than they consume. So. 
that's kind of a moot point. If you need to move to another home within the same region covered by your utility company, nothing actually changes. You just notify the community solar project of your change of address and they would switch your bill just like a regular utility bill would switch. But if you move out of the area where your community solar is located to an area run by a different utility company, you can sell up the panels that you own as you would with any other asset. Or if you happen to lease those panels, there's usually a notice period of 90 days or so that you have to serve and then you're free to sign up with another community solar project near your new home. Because community solar doesn't have anywhere near the publicity that regular old rooftop solar has, I'm sure that many of you have never heard of it before. And I'm going to be honest, I hadn't either until a few years ago. But in the US, community solar is a big deal, with the US Department of Energy fully on board with community solar as a way for individuals and communities to switch to cleaner sources of energy. And according to the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, which tracks community solar installations across the US, a total of 2.6 gigawatts of active community solar projects were online at the end of June 2020. And while not all states in the US have community solar projects online yet. There's been a significant growth in interest in community solar and new projects are coming online monthly. Which brings me to today's sponsors, Energy Sage. Energy Sage is an online service in the US that helps homeowners connect with local verified solar installers who really know their stuff and can help you navigate the process of installing photovoltaic solar panels on your home or surprise, surprise, can help you join a community solar program. We used Energy Sage when we were looking for installers willing to help us put solar panels on the roof of our house, and our Energy Sage verified installers were professional, knowledgeable, and they even put us in touch with an amazing local credit union to help us finance our solar panels for as low a monthly payment as possible. And with the US federal tax credit for solar panels due to drop from 26% this year to 22% next, now is the perfect time to plan to get solar panels for your home. Many Energy Sage installers are now planning out their installations through to the end of this summer and some into autumn. So if you want to take advantage of that 26% federal tax credit, time is really running out. So follow the link in the description to sign up for Energy Sage's free no obligation service today. And if you do choose to use an Energy Sage installer for your solar project, or you use Energy Sage to find a community solar project, we will get a small referral fee. So you'll be helping the channel too. Before I sign off from today's video, there are a couple other reasons that don't often get mentioned that could pique your interest when it comes to joining a community solar project. The first thing to note is the fact that solar panels used in community solar setups are often more efficient than residential solar panels because they're commercial solar panels rather than residential ones. In fact, they can be as much as 2% more efficient than the ones you normally put on the roof of your home. And that means more energy generation potential. Second, because they're usually situated in large fields with no overhanging trees or obstructions, as you would normally get at home, your panels will actually generate more power throughout the day than your average roof-mounted solar project. I mean, the panels here at the house kind of give up after the sun ducks behind the massive trees on our neighbor's lot, which is normally around 2 to 4 p.m. There's also no maintenance to worry about, that's someone else's problem, which is great. And if you live somewhere where pine cones or heavy snowfall would impact solar panel efficiency, you're not going to have to worry about cleaning anything. Big solar farms have cleaning in mind, so forget about that and forget about worrying about cleaning your gutters when you can't easily access them because you've got a solar array on your roof. Ask me how I know about that one. And that's it for today's video. Thanks again to Energy Sage for sponsoring the show do check them out at the link below. If you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room, there are links in the video description. And if you really like this show, why not leave us a super thanks? It's easy to do and everything you do send our way goes towards helping us make awesome content. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel and our other channel, Transport Evolve Take Two, and give the bell a gentle ding to make sure you're told when our next video goes live. 
Thanks on behalf of the entire crew go out to everyone who makes this channel possible. That includes everyone who supports us on Patreon and YouTube. And if you're a supporter at the charged up level, you'll see your name right here on my right hand side. Thanks to our self-driving tier supporters, Chris Maxwell, Pedro Moore Pinheiro, Patrick Boyarski, Bennett Elder, Brian Newton, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leon, Andrew Martin, Greta Drahota, Brophy Wolf, Tazlet in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Raging Fellows, Jim Burness, Chris Asentar, Chris and Michael Johnson, Peter Dillinger and Denny Hyde. And of course, super out of this world thanks to our Starman supporters. They are Anonymous Freak, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Rory Litwin, Joe Bresney, Reed R, JP Fagerback, Russ, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Andrew Glenn, Paul Conway, Laura Reynolds, Ellery Hensley and Ian. If you'd like to be part of that amazing list, you can join Patreon at the link below, hit the join button to support us on YouTube or show us your support through Ko-fi or by buying something from our cool swag store like this t-shirt. Links below. And if you're unable to support us financially, please know that just watching the video and sharing it really does make a massive difference to how our channel performs and of course, our Google ad revenue. Thanks for joining me and as always, keep evolving.